check it out. Hey guys, this is the one, the only, the Traveling Comics with Bueller, and I'm on Comic Book Addicts with my good buddy Scott here. Yeah. I've been on the show, he doesn't let me come on very often, but I actually have to drive thousands of miles <laughs> to make personal appearances, but for him I'll do it. But I hope you guys enjoy the show tonight, I know I do every week. And don't forget to vote for this guy, because I think you're nominated, right? CBC Awards, yeah. Yes, he's nominated, Thanks. he uh, got my vote, because you know he's a friend of mine, I play a little bit of favoritism, but you know he <laughs> deserves it, so he got my vote. But guys, enjoy the show, okay? Wow, I should have took that input title down when I redid that. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Addicts. It is Monday, September 30th at the time that this will air. Hope everybody's having a great afternoon. I hope your week has started off well. we got a great show for you guys tonight, man. I can't wait. It's been a little over a year since I've had Jonathan on, and a lot has happened since then, so I cannot wait to bring him out here. Sipping my coffee. We're about to have a good time. We're about to have a good conversation. But at first, I want to talk about a few things with you guys. A couple things that are happening in the comic book community that I want to make sure that you guys are aware of. The CBC Awards, of course, like Bueller just mentioned, we are nominated for two categories this year. So I wanted to put that out there. If you want to go vote, we are nominated in the favorite channel from 1K to 5K sub tier. And Comic Book Addicts is nominated again this year for Best Ongoing Series, and this time it's in a sub-tier. So maybe we stand a better chance. I don't know. We're up against some pretty damn good channels. But if you feel so compelled to go vote, www.cbc. What am I saying, man? I'll kick it over to Brian. Brian can tell you a lot better than I can. Hey, YouTube. Brian LCS with a CBC Awards update. Finalist voting is now open. So head over to cbcawards.org and click on the vote here. Let me show you that. If you just scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the big uh, vote here. Click on that, and that'll open up your ballot. And if you scroll a little bit further down, you can see a list of all the uh, finalists. And if you click on their channel link, uh, name, it'll take you directly to their YouTube channel. So if there's a channel that you're unfamiliar with, please go check them out. Uh, and finalist voting will run until uh, October 19th, and then we will announce the winners uh, Saturday, November 2nd during a live stream. It's a Saturday night, uh, and we'll, we will announce the winners and have some special guests and, and some fun things planned for the community. So that's it. Thank you again to everybody who continues to support the awards, and congratulations to all of this year's finalists. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations to all the other finalists. Be sure you go vote. A lot of great deserving content creators out there. Monday also means the Monday night lineup. We got a lot of really good comic book related live streams going this evening. Izzy, Izzy normally opens for us at 630, but he has taken a little bit of a break. Um, I think he just got through moving and setting back up and all that good stuff, but he is on a little bit of a break right now. So um, be sure to catch Council of Comics at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Council of Comics puts on a great show. They run through the comics for the week. Uh, you got Roscoe, Geek Out with Roscoe, and Between the Lines at 8.35 p.m. Eastern Time, an interactive drawing show involving the community. It's topic-related. The guest picks the topic and uh, draws some pretty cool stuff on the show. So go check that out if you never have. 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we got 22 comics in his top 10 alternatives. My Southern brother, 22, he takes the hot 10 list from the week and he gives you some alternative picks. He gives you his own picks, some kind of cold spec stuff. So it's really cool to see what he comes up with. And it's one of my favorite live streams to watch on Monday night. So if you never check that out, 9 p.m. Eastern time, 22 comics. And then we got my homie, Will, Cupo Comics, wrapping things up at 10 p.m. Eastern time with Monday night, Raw Books, a community hangout. So be sure to go hang out with Will. He is an awesome guy. If you've never went over there and hung out, go to Cupo Comics, 10 p.m. Eastern time, and hang out on Monday Night Raw Books with Will. It's always a great time. Want to be sure to mention that next week, Comic Book Addicts will be back live. I know it's been a couple weeks since we've been live, but I'll be back for the first time since the channel got monetized. We're fully monetized now, and I'm super, super happy about that. But we're going to be back live for the first time since that has happened. So I hope that you guys will come and hang out with this awesome writer that we got coming on. One of my most anticipated comic books for this year, because I'm a huge Toxic Avenger fan going back to childhood. And uh, this guy's the writer of the series, Matt Boers. He's going to be coming on, talking to us all about it, uh, giving us the scoop on the series a couple days before it hits stores on Wednesday, the following Wednesday. So I'm really looking forward to that. I hope that you guys come back next week. And uh, yeah, 
But anyways, I blabbed on and on long enough this today. We got an awesome guest. Can't wait to bring him back. Since since I talked to this guy last, he has moved to Italy, so I can't wait to talk a little bit about that. But he has also dropped a couple of really great titles, um, including this one, Can I Scream? I really like this book a lot. Um, but he did that with his wife, Francesca Fantini. But anyways, let me go ahead and get him out here. My guest this evening is a very talented writer and creator. Uh, responsible for so many amazing indie titles such as The Recount, Dream Master, Caffeinated Hearts, Can I Scream, Quicksand, Capable, so many others. The list just goes on and on. Since his last visit on Comic Book Addicts, he's moved to Italy. Here to talk to us about his new series, Spill Blood, and more. Y'all help me welcome to the show, Jonathan Hedrick. What's, What's up, going John? on, Scott, man? Thanks for having welcome. me back. Yes, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and hanging out with us. Yeah, man, my pleasure. Especially since I was late to the show. I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> it's all good, man. There's nothing to worry about. I, I'm on Italian time, so it's uh, everything's all relaxed over here anyways. So. Well, cool. Well, like I was telling these guys, you are responsible for so many great titles. And I'll show a few that I picked up recently. They recently re-released this in Legacy Edition, the recount. That's right. Yeah, that, that was a big deal, man. That was really cool of uh, Scout to do. You know, that, I mean, that's, why that's not reprint amazing. it? Yeah, yeah. Dude, I mean, in Legacy, yeah, that's awesome. I, I was really happy to see them re-release that so that uh, people had another chance to pick it up because I know that right. it was, it got super hot really quick and copies were yeah. hard to come by. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first two prints sold out. Um, and then there was a, a third print uh, about two years ago that came out. And uh, I think that one kind of flew underneath the radar and probably is collecting dust in the back of everyone's LCS. <laughs> wow. But uh, maybe this one will uh, get people, you know, stir up the juices uh, some more in the community and have some, you know, the new. There's always people coming in and out of the comic book, uh, you know, uh, scene. So maybe someone will catch up on that and decide to buy the trade who knows true yeah. yeah i hope so and this one's came out this past year can i scream oh yeah i love this book yeah. man i've been i couldn't wait to tell you that uh i i've been checking out this book and it's an amazing title you actually did this together with your wife francesca That's santini right. and uh um, it right. turned out beautiful it turned out beautiful Thank i you. love that book yeah, we're pretty proud of that one too, and um, it also sold out. The first print, the second print came out last month, so we're really that's a cool like you know uh, pat on the back uh, for us to say you know our first collaboration um, sold out. So yeah, Man, hoping to do fantastic. many more. Yeah, yeah, I hope to see you guys do many more because you make a yeah. great team. Her on the artwork and you doing the right, it's fantastic. It's it's just yeah, such a great you. series. I and and you did the uh, you, you've done another one that I haven't checked out yet that I want to. Um, what it was? What's it called? Brackish? Is that the name of it? Brackish. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. one was crowdfunded earlier in the year, um, and uh, that's going to be a crowdfunded series that I'm um, uh, going to put out. You know, through Kickstarter. Um, and yeah, it's um, uh, that came out. I think the campaign ran in May, and they just recently fulfilled it. So hopefully issue two will be um, on Kickstarter at the beginning of um, 2025. Man, I got to check that one out. That's that's one of the only series that you've done that I haven't checked out yet. <laughs> Caffeinated Hearts. Caffeinated yeah. Hearts. That's another brilliant series or brilliant one Thank shot, you. I should say. Um, the you. artwork is amazing. The writing's terrific. I love this book as well. Uh, just kind of run through a couple of your, your titles to get us started. Mm -hmm. Capable, another brilliant title. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, and then oh, issue yeah. six just uh, fulfilled. So nice. And I have, I have all of them except for issue six. Oh so. snap! Is yours? Yeah, uh, we got to get you I number six, man. Five. I got to get issue number six. I got to hop on that. <laughs> um, but since you've been here, it's been a little bit over a year since you've been here. You have made the move from what West Melbourne, Florida, to yeah. what part of Italy? I'm in northeastern Italy near a town called Camacchio. Wow, man, that's yeah, that's yeah. a big move. How, how, how has that been? It's it's I mean it's been good overall. I mean it, it's definitely um, a culture change, you know, a change in you know in many different ways. But overall, it, it was um, 
you know, I don't regret it at all so far. You know, I don't think I will yeah. because I've been able to, um, you know, work on comics full time. Um, you know, I, I'm a lot less stressed. Uh, you know, mental health is doing much better than it was back in the States. You know, there's le right. less of a the rat race feel going on. You know, so I can uh, just focus on comics, which is where I want to be. And um, yeah, thankfully I had a I've had a consistent uh, flow of work for hire gigs since I've been here. So you know I, I can't even work legally here if I wanted to. So the the okay. comic book gig has been helping you know subsidize that income uh, in the meantime. So yeah, it's just working out great. I never even thought about that, but yeah. Okay. But that that's, that's cool though. The, the work's coming in and you're able to do that. Cause that's the type of work that you want to do anyways. Right. That's what you're right. good at, man. Yeah. Um, thank you. That's uh, yeah, no, you're incredibly talented at writing, man. Oh, that's man. why I enjoy when you, when you come and talk to me about it, dude, I love your comics, man. I always have, even before I knew who you were. Um, I, I appreciate picked, that. I, yeah. picked, I picked up capable. I'll actually, I'll show you the book. I picked this up at Epicos. I had no idea who Jonathan Hedrick was and uh, just kind of fell in love with the writing. Just, just cool, super man. talented. I appreciate What's that, me? especially with capable, you know, since that's not one that gets in, in the spotlight very often. So. Oh, and I love it. It's such a good title. You guys watching, if you've never checked out capable, um, go check it out. Jonathan Hedrick comics.com. Can you, you, can you, you can pick it up there, right? Yeah, I have a link to my online store, so it'll take you to another website. But yeah, you you can buy um, capable through my. Um, yeah, I'd buy, suggest people go to my website first. Yeah. yeah, and I wanted to be sure to mention that Jonathan Hedrick Comics .com. He does have a website where you can pick up his titles, check out what's going on in his world, everything that's going on with his writing and stuff. Um, but yeah, you can pick up most of his stuff on Jonathan Hedrick Comics .com, So if you weren't aware of that, and um, Dude, what's uh, what tell us a little bit about your spill blood? This is one that I've been hearing a lot about, and um, I'm not familiar with, but I wanted to talk to you about it because it's gonna actually drop in Keen Spot picked it up and it's gonna be dropping in comic shops soon, correct? That's right. The uh, scheduled release date is October 16th, so there's a few, few weeks after this show releases or airs. And um, that's another one shot that I did with um, my good friend, uh, Stefano Cardicelli. We, we worked together on Caffeinated Hearts, um, you yeah. mentioned before. We did um, Freak Show Night, and we did Space Cadet. So this is our fourth uh, title together. Wow. Um, nice. But, but this one, we decided to go a little bit bigger. We did It's a 36-page one shot, and it's all in black, white, and red. As you can see, like in the background that you got going on, which is really cool. Yeah, it's really um, sick looking. I love it. Yeah, it's very like noir style. Um, fans of, I think, Hellboy and even um, Matt Wagner's um, Grendel for the people that may have uh, been old enough to read indie comics in the 90s. Um, not to age myself, <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah, it, it's it's dark, gritty. It, it's about this um, priest who uh, listens to people's confessions during the day. And then at night he uses that information to take people out. Um, so it's, it's a cool little, um, you know, vengeful spirit type story. I think a lot of people will dig for that, you know, horror season that it's going to be released in. Yeah. That's, it sounds like it's, it's hitting at the right time of year. Oh yeah, um, I, I couldn't be happier about that. So hopefully that doesn't get delayed, doesn't get the classic indie two week delay or <laughs> anything like that. Yeah, which I mean, it very well could, but I think Spillblood Spillblood released on time. I think, or am I dead wrong about that? Uh, well, sp uh, can I mean, I scream? can I scream? Can I scream? Yeah. Can I, scream? I, think, I meant to say, I can I scream? <laughs> I think it's uh, it, it released a week or two late, unfortunately. Oh, but, it actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that happens, happens man. man. It happens with it really. Does. I think I've only had one or two titles actually drop on the day that they were actually scheduled. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it happens. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, true. Well, uh, we'll see. Um, oh, dude, I wanted to ask you, uh, what is 
I, I started to ask you about Italy and then I jumped away from it, but I wanted to ask you like, what's been, what has life, what is life like in Italy compared to the United States? Is it like us, is it as fast paced or how, how is it, what makes it different? Oh man, definitely not uh, fast paced at all. <laughs> um, it's a slower pace. It, 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 yeah, they got it in, in the lowest gear right now. And on, on top of it, you know, I'm coming from a person who's only been here for uh, about four months. Um, and, I, and I don't oh, live cool. in one of the major cities either. So, you know, I, I can't speak for the entire country. But the area I live in, you know, it's um, it, it's it's a slower you know way of life. There's not very many like chained businesses. We have a, a couple of, um, you know, small grocery stores that, that, you know, are only a fraction of the size of like the supermarkets we have in America. Um, okay. and, and, you know, you have to plan accordingly because places close. People, you know, a lot of places are family owned and, and they they take their three hour lunch break and, and, they, and they go home at six. And so if you didn't get what you needed to do done, you got to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Um, okay well, that's different so, yeah yeah it, it, it's different for like because in america we just everything's open 24 7 you can get anything anytime you want you know um uh, even in the smallest towns it, uh, everything's open you know you got your 7-elevens you got your um your, your publixes and your walmarts and stuff but um yeah you got a uh plan you know for the most part and yeah. but but it's it's okay. You know, the, I can live with that. It's, that's not like uh, anything challenging. It's not, um, you know, do or die, but um, yeah. It, um, other things that have been a little bit different, you know, I, I don't, um, I don't have a driver's license over here. So, you know, it's a, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't drive. Um, I, I ride my bi uh, bicycle, I drive, you know, to, to the grocery store sometimes, which is cool. You know, uh, it, it's, um, I, I had, ridden a bike a lot in of people, years is, is, you know? is where you live is it like somewhere where you can bicycle around and you can do that yeah yeah it's, it's pretty um, bicycle friendly for the most part um uh, there's That's some cool. there's some some roads where you wouldn't want to you know um ride your bike on because there's not a sidewalk and there's a lot of um you know uh semi trucks and stuff with you know uh in, in the uh, other streets, you know, you can really get around. I, I I could ride my bike to the beach if I want to. We're really close to the Adriatic Sea, so you know, I, oh, I could I, I could walk there in, in like thirty minutes. So it, it's um, uh, that's it's, amazing. Yeah, and and which is you know odd because in Florida I was really close to the beach too, but I I yeah. wasn't. I never you know would bicycle anywhere. You know, it was always get in the car and and, and go. But uh, it's like a yeah, big surfing cool. community where, where you were in Florida, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I used to surf too in, in high school, um, for, for the longest time. Yeah. Lots of, uh, pro surfers have come up from that area and it's just, that's it. There's a whole community uh, of that there. So yeah. that's awesome. Not that much, still not much surfing over here though. You know, it, it, the waves don't get right out, surfing that in Italy? Nah, no, okay. I'm from, not from what I've seen. I mean, I think you can do it, but it, we don't, you know, it's not the ocean. I was close to the Atlantic Ocean. This is this is a sea over here. So, yeah. like the the winds are just, are just not the same. Well, what about comic shops? Do comic shops? It, it, this could be a very dumb question to some people, but do comic shops exist in Italy? I I wondered they, that myself. They do, but they're a little different. So uh, the and I don't have one very close to me at all. It, it, it would it'd be a hike to get to. It would not be a bicycle. <laughs> it would be like a. <laughs> I need to get on the bus or, or, or take a car to get to it. And um, gotcha. the only one I've been to in Italy was um, uh, it, that was like a bona fide, what you would call a comic book store. It was mm -hmm. like split manga, uh, half manga, half comics. And, and oh, okay. the comic, Interesting. And, it, and they treat it less as uh, um, the, the collector side of it isn't as there as it is in America. You know, in America, okay. you know, the LCS is, you know, you, I think readers, even, you know, there's collectors and there's readers, but even the readers are um, very particular on, on how um, 
the comic books are treated and, and maintained. But over there, uh, or over here in the, the comic book store I went to, they had stickers right on the cover of the comic book because people are reading them, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. So it, it, the, 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 the collectability of it just isn't the same for the most part. I'm sure it's there. I, I haven't seen it. And I've done a con since I've been here. So, you know, but um, oh, manga it, manga is really, really more popular. And people want more of the uh, collected formats instead of just the, the floppies. Oh, okay. Okay. So so manga is pretty big there, just like it, it's kind of taken over here as well. And everywhere, yeah. I guess. But Oh, yeah, yeah, um, for sure. I, I think America is probably like the slowest to, to finally embrace it. You know, it was there yeah. when, when even when I was a kid, but it was something that always felt like it was hard to get. Now you can go to Barnes and Noble and you can they have a huge manga section and animes on TV all the time. But even when I was a kid, it was it was it was hard to get. You know, I, I was watching Akira off of like a, a four fifth copied you know vhs tape uh right. and i felt like i was like waiting for the fbi to come crashing into my, my house and, and arrest me for watching you know watching it and it was just so Sorry. hard to get that stuff so it just i almost grew up you know pretty much grew up without it and, but over here that it's always been a constant like even on tv they were watching anime here in the 80s it's you know that's interesting. And I also had my bootlegged uh, copy of Ninja Scroll back in the day. Ninja so it, it, yep. it was hard to access. It was harder to access. It's everywhere now. Um, yeah. But what's, the, what's been the biggest culture shock? Like, what's been the biggest thing you're like, oh, man, uh, we don't we don't have this here or, or something like that since you've moved? Uh, I'm, I'm going to get raked through the coals about this, but it's the food. <laughs> it's the food. I miss the American food. And, and really? People the are so, people. I miss it, man. I, I, not just the junk, just just in general. You know, it just it hits differently. Like the we, uh, I gotta say, say what you want about American food, but we do breakfast right. We got yeah, we got our our breakfast on lock. And, yes. and here, like uh, you, there's. No, I, I remember we went to McDonald's for for breakfast. I, I go to McDonald's occasionally here just so I can get like a little bit of slice of America. Um, when yeah. I'm feeling homesick, but they didn't have breakfast sandwiches because that's not common. Like a breakfast sandwich is not a thing here. Weird. Um, it, it's so super weird. weird. And so it, what is, it, what's like the big breakfast item at, at an Italian McDonald's? The, it's mostly like pastries. It, it you know, it, it's you. very very sugary and, and, and sweet um, desserts for for breakfast. Which you know, I get. We have donuts in America. Donuts are very popular. Pancakes, waffles, but it, it's like the same thing that you would see served at lunch or dinner as a dessert. So there's not like a like a line of like this is a a, a breakfast you know uh, item. You know, like in America. We usually don't have a donut past breakfast. I mean, I certainly have, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's, it's not something you it's not you know doesn't have that labeled as a a, a dinner food. But like the same right. thing that pastry you would see served at breakfast, you would see it all, all day long in, in Italy. And, and you know, wow. eggs, bacon. It's just not. It's just not the same, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Fun. Bummer. Well, yeah. uh, and I saw that uh, you can't get the uh, the the cereal here, the the, the Count Chocula and Blueberry yeah, cereal. That's another <laughs> thing, man. The cereal, uh, the cereal aisle. There's not even a cereal aisle here. It, it's like a cereal shelf, and there's maybe like four options, <laughs> and and I've tried them all already. And, and the one that <laughs> I can tolerate the best is just the regular Special K, no frills no you know that's the best <laughs> one out of all all the, the options i've tried um so yeah yeah the, the that that long big long cereal aisle that we have in america and every single grocery store is yeah. replaced here with a big long aisle of olive oil <laughs> you know, it's just oh, wow. they, okay. they, they just they just do things differently so yeah I, I miss my breakfast food but it, it's all good man yeah, it. I mean, because it's beautiful from 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 what I've seen, it it, it looks so beautiful out there, and where you're living looks really beautiful. 
And uh, it is, yeah. It, it seems like that more than makes up for it. Oh, absolutely. And, and I've had some good food here too. Um, it's oh, you know, dude, it's, Italian food, yeah, man. I can only pros imagine. And cons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they've um, you know, they they have that um, stereotype of the having excellent food for a reason. You know, there's a truth behind it. So. I don't know if I've ever actually had off. I uh, know I, I haven't, man. Not living here in the southern states, you don't get <laughs> authentic Italian food. So, no, yeah, yeah you'd have to go I'm to like a special. Yeah, you'd have to go to like a, a restaurant where the people actually came straight from Italy to. And even then, you know, the you get down to the ingredients that they have access to, and, and it's just mm. not going to be the the same taste. Plus, the what Americans think of as Italian. Typical Italian cuisine isn't that common. You know, I thought I was going to be like walking into spaghetti and ravioli and lasagna all the time, but it's not like that. And, you know, that, that's here. They definitely um, dig their pasta, but it, it, it's, you know, a lot of sliced meats and cheeses, you know, and mm. it's it's not as – not everything is covered in Alfredo sauce or, or tomato sauce like we have it over in America. It's – it's a lot different uh, as far as that okay. kind of, you know, expectations. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, dude, what have you been reading? Have you been reading anything good this year? Uh, have you oh, yeah, man. Any cool comics since you in the past year? What's been some cool yeah, stuff yeah. that you've read? Yeah, so I'm big into the Hoopla app. And, if, you know, if anyone's listening is not aware of that, that's – um. Uh, an app that's uh, partnered with uh, many um, library systems across the con- across America, and if your local library is partnered with them, you can access a lot of comic books in, uh, in addition to music and movies and TV shows, audio books. So that that's been like my saving grace since I've been here. Since I can't you know get um, comic books as frequently, right. so. Um, and you have a you have a limited amount of borrows that you can get a month, but it usually works out to where I'm not um, running out of borrows or, um, or I, I hit the exact amount I need by the end of the month. But um, let's see, like I've been rereading uh, the Sandman series. Um, you know, you, you see my posts every Sunday when, when I'm doing my Sandman Sunday challenge. So, been, oh yeah, um, rereading that uh, this this time reading it with through the lens of a uh, a comic book writer who wants to learn, you know, uh, looking at it that way this time. Um, Yeah. And, you know, picking up, you know, some things like, oh, I got to try that. You know, I like how that dialogue played out or, you know, you got to learn from the masters, you know, Um, there's a reason why it's a classic. Of course. And then, yeah, um, I read, I'm almost done with um, Beneath the Trees. Um, I think that one was great. I knew I knew from the get go that that was going to be an Eisner um, nominee. You know for sure. Oh man, it, that's yeah. that's been that was. I read it a couple weeks ago. It was so good, so good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm. This the last issue is, is the only one I've. Um, I, I haven't read yet. So and that's the downside about reading things digitally as they come out. You know, that reading one issue is a borrow, mm-hmm. you know, um, if okay. I wait for the trade, that is just one borrow. So th- I've been trying to um, read things um, digitally as a trade. So I don't, you know, waste all five of my borrows in, in one month, but um, smart makes sense. Some things that some things I can't wait on though. <laughs> you know, that was one that I was okay, <laughs> okay with. Um, and then most recently, I've been um, uh, catching up on Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil run. Uh, I'm super behind on that, um, but that, yeah, that's that was good a stuff. Run. And um, his uh, his most recent work on um, Batman, his Batman, um, Chip Zdarsky. So that's that's been good. And, and you know, I, I sprinkle in some indie comics. And I, you know, I get back a lot of. Um, you know, projects on Kickstarter. So I try to read as many of those as I can. So it, yeah. uh, moving over here has definitely freed up my time to uh, allot me some more time for, for reading, which is, I'm really grateful for because I was struggling to find, make the time for it back in the States. I don't know how That's people <laughs> can find the time. 
Yeah, the speed of life is just crazy here. It's it's hectic. It gets hectic. It really is. Yeah, yeah. No joke. Well, um, getting back to uh, your 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 writing, your personal writing. I heard that uh, Dream Master could possibly come be coming back because that's. I wanted to ask you about Dream Master because, dude, I love this book. Yeah, it's man. so good. Um, Black Thank Box you. Comics title. I love a lot of the Black Box Comics titles anyways, but Dream Master is definitely my favorite out of all the Black Box Comics. I and, appreciate um, that, I heard, man. heard a little something about maybe uh, it could be returning. It should be. Uh, I mean, uh, I've seen artwork for issues six, seven, eight, and nine. So um, uh, hopefully, I've, I've been told 2025. So uh, is when it'll it'll come out the next uh, five issues, issue six to ten. So that narrows it down to 365 days. So hopefully, <laughs> sometime uh, during 2025, um, we'll see more Dream Master. And um, today, I um, as we record this, I turned in the script for issue 13. So I, I'm I'm already on volume three. You know, just yeah. waiting for volume, the artwork for volume two to finish. And uh, that to be released. So hopefully, um, Black Box will will we'll see that in, in the uh, closer side of 2025 than the later side. Man, I certainly hope so. Because yeah, Black Box, too. Has been, <laughs> dude, they've been popping. Uh, they've been pushing out some heat, but yeah. Dream Master is definitely my favorite among all of the creative team. Thank you. Your writing, dude. This yeah. it's a fantastic book, guys. If you've never checked out Dream Master, do yourself a favor. And go to Black Box Comics and check it out. It's it's amazing. It's such a good title. Thank you. The character is really it's, it's such an original character, and he's fighting inside people's dreams. And it's it's right. it's a sick book, guys. It's it, anything that could happen in somebody's dreams gets illustrated in these books. Uh, yeah. Paired with Jonathan's writing, it's you got to check it out. Dream Master Black Box Comics. Y'all go check it out. And yeah, Bracket please is, do. Brackish was another title. Am I saying that correctly first? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brackish. That's right. Yep. Okay. I wanted to make sure I wasn't butchering the title. Um, but no, I appreciate it. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that title because that's um, one of the few that you've done that I'm not familiar with that I want to get more familiar with. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about that one? Yeah. Yeah. No problem. So Brackish, which, you know, uh, for those, I get a lot of people telling me that they've never heard that word before. And that yeah. brackish is when um, two uh, bodies of water, one fresh, one salt mix. You call that area of water brackish. And um, okay. get, we have a lot of that in Florida because of the swamps. You know, salt water will come in from either the Gulf or um, the uh, Atlantic side and it'll mix with the freshwater swamps. And, and that area is called brackish. And um I titled wow. it that because in the story, there's these two families that have been at war with each other over this land in the Florida swamps for centuries. Uh, and w after the years of fighting with each other, they decide to draw a truce. And one of them takes the freshwater side of the swamp. The other side takes the uh, saltwater. And uh, okay. everything was fine for several decades, but until the... Uh, the son of one side and the daughter of the other side happen to cross paths and fall in love with each other. And then that truce just gets wiped away and then the fighting begins. So in, in issue one, we kind of just see how those two meet. Uh, and it's a, a big setup to what's going to happen uh, in this series. So it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be violent and it's not as violent as it is in issue one, but it's going to be, uh, I like to compare it to a modern version of Romeo and Juliet, uh, but set in Florida swamps. Very cool. Yeah. Man, that sounds awesome. And I've yeah, seen some you. really cool covers. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, really yeah. Cool, interesting covers for the book, in, including like a gator skin looking cover, which yes, is pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, we did uh, using UV coating. To like uh, line um, uh, around the print of the gate, uh, gator skin, it, it makes it feel like you're rubbing up against like a rough, scaly type material. So that was pretty unique, and I think only like maybe fifty of them were printed. Um, 
So that, that was a cool, unique thing. I hope we can do something like that for the next uh, issue when the next campaign runs. Because that, that, that was one of a kind. I, I haven't seen anyone do a Gator skin cover before. You know, I, mm -mm. You know, I, I, I like my, um, my, co my, you know, hokey covers to a certain extent, but that one is something I got down with, you know? Yeah. That's <laughs> killer, man. I, yeah, I'm, there's a lot, I'm there's a lot of gimmicks. Gimmick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a sucker for a good gimmick. I mean, there's some bad gimmicks, but that was a good gimmick. You know, that when they told when the crowdfunding publisher, Metal Ninja Studios, told me about that that idea, I was like, yes, that is let's do that. Killer. Yeah, run that, <laughs> run that. Yeah. And you y'all, you did there was a really cool hollow foil for uh Can I Scream? A yes. rainbow hollow foil that was awesome. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah. and it, it got a metal cool. cover too. It, there was like Ooh, a man. A, yeah, the, I think only 30 of the metal covers were printed. So, yeah, the, there's a, a rare metal cover for Can I Scream out there. The artwork on that book is, is just fantastic. It's, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, Francesca did a I great job. I, I knew she would. She and uh, it, it was a lot of fun, you know. I'm, I'm What's it like getting that. to work with her? Good, you know, uh, it, it, the collaboration is fun. I don't often get to uh, be, you know, pulled into, you know, uh, the artist studio and be like, hey, is this what you were thinking of right here? You know, sometimes I get an email or a screenshot, you know, DM to me, but I get to actually like sit and look what, at, you know, and ask, to see the layouts uh, and compare it to the script and talk about it in real time. So that, that's a, a huge, huge benefit when it, uh, being creative like that. Yeah, it sounds like it. I'd say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned you got to go to a con since you've lived there. What was that like? What was it? What yeah. was it called? And, and what was it about? The con was called Modena Nerd. So Modena is the city that it was in, and Nerd, oh, okay. you know, because it's like a pop culture event. Uh, we were guests there. Um, we were invited like um, shortly after I. I um, made the move over here. Uh, and I think it was just, a it was earlier this month that the show was, it, uh, yeah, it was earlier this month, a couple weeks ago, over two days. It was a Saturday and Sunday show. And um, it had a small, it had all kinds of things. Uh, you know, I wouldn't call it a comic con. It was more of those pop culture shows, that, you know, more of an expo. Um, those are fun. Across like three different rooms. You know, I mean, I didn't even get to see much of it. I, I was kind of like stuck at my table in the room I was in. But from what I saw uh, and like on um, social media, they had like, you know, uh, uh, in addition to the other things that we we're used to seeing, like cosplay and vendors, they had um, uh, it, like a, a karaoke section. People, I never seen karaoke at a con before. That's but cool. Yeah. That's people fun. were do, doing that. They had panels. Um, uh, yeah, and it was a cool experience for me. I never um, been to a con in another country, especially one where I didn't Neither. speak the, the language fluently. So, um, and I made a few sales, which was really cool. You know, I, it wasn't you know gangbusters. I, I wasn't rich, but um, well, I didn't walk out of it rich. But uh, yeah, it, being able to to sign some comics and uh, uh, you know and just talk to, to people you know about my work in another country on another continent. It, it was a really mm. cool experience, you know, and, and I got to meet yeah. some, um, some awesome artists that um, don't get to the States that often, like um, Flaviano, who does the artwork for Grimm. Um, you know, I, I got yes. to meet him. He was super cool. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, That's and awesome. then um, uh, Lorenzo from, um, uh, he does artwork on Void Rivals and, um, uh, uh, oblivion song yeah he works with robert kirkman a lot he was there uh, he, he he was super friendly um yeah it's it, it was a lot of artists there too you didn't see very many writers it, it, the this the as small as the uh artist alley section was it was mainly just mm -hmm. artists so i'll i'll in addition to being probably the only american there I, I was one of the few i didn't see many writers anyways um but yeah, and lots of, um, again, you know, it was very manga themed. Um, a lot of the guests, like the big celebrity guests there were the Italian voice actors of 
popular um, animes. Uh, um, so, I, that, I mean, I have no idea who they are, and some of the animes I'm not familiar with, but a lot of people were, were digging it. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a great. It was a great experience, you know. Uh, looking forward to to another one. So, yeah. How was uh was it tough? Okay, because a couple weeks ago I recorded a show with um the artist from Biomex. Fantastic, mm-hmm. Kleber is an awesome guy. He and he's a fantastic mm-hmm. artist. He is in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and English um, is not his first language. Uh, he speaks Portuguese. Um, yeah. he he did, did the show anyways, and mm-hmm. he he managed to do really well. Um, but it was tough at times. Is, is it tough at times for you um, when it comes to like trying to um, to talk to people about different things? Or, or are you picking up on it? Or are you able to learn? Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely challenging with the language barrier. Uh, and I've been studying long before I um, made the move. I, I have like a over a 400 day streak on Duolingo, um, practicing oh, cool. Italian. Uh, I'm hoping cool. to take in-person classes soon, but uh, thankfully, you know, in, in Europe, more people are um, used to um, interacting with people from a different language because of how many different countries are, are close together, you know, in in, oh. in this continent. Um, so not only are a lot of people can speak or uh, understand a, a, a little bit of English. Some people actually are pretty fluent in it, and um, uh, and I, I know enough to just like get by, you know, like if I, you know, um, to, just to like you know buy something at a store, or if I need to go to the bathroom, or you know if I'm in trouble or something like that. And at, at the con, I I made a sign ahead of time, say, hey, it, you know, I translated it in Italian. I said, I'm, you know, in, in, I speak English. I only know a little bit of Italian. If you're able to speak English, you know um please you know oh, please man. do or, or yeah uh bear with me uh, and yeah it, it all worked fine and plus i i have francesca with me and, and italian is her oh, yeah. her first language and she do, does great in english in english anyways she picked it up real fast so yeah awesome. uh, that's i i got uh i got a lot of uh help here you know i, I didn't just like of course. Move, move here and and, and uh, definitely yeah, being helped so that's a, a good thing sure. yeah she got your back she's got your yeah. back on it i'm sure yeah, she's not gonna I'm leave sure. me hanging <laughs> that's awesome. yeah that's really yeah. cool and it seems like you guys got a great thing going uh over there and and with the, with the work on comics man the pairing uh the way that you two the, the books that you're doing together are, are yeah, yeah. outstanding I, I love i hope to see you guys work together a lot more in the future because I, I like to see the you guys working together. It's awesome. It's been really cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, she's actually wrapping up another project that we collaborated on. Um, It hasn't been announced yet and it's someone else's book. So I can't, can't speak too much about it. Can't talk about it yet. Okay. Yeah. But we're, we're fingers crossed for an announcement soon because it's like a really cool project. That's not like as common in comics to do. Um, and I, I just, I, I got to be vague and I hate that, but, um, no, it's, yeah, it's, hope, fine. it's fine. Yeah. Hopefully something will be announced soon because, uh, the publisher wants it out soon. And, uh, it, you know, me, uh, as soon as I can speak about it, I'm going to be blowing it up on social media, but she, she's wrapping up the last few pages on it. And, um, it, it th- we got this project because of can I scream, you know, we were promoting can I scream and someone came to us and said, Hey, saw you promoting can i scream would you be interested in doing this so th- that's exactly what any comic book creator wants you know one job mm-hmm. leads to the next one and um yeah, yeah. so that this is um it's gonna be a cool project uh, i think a lot of people are gonna uh, uh dig it and uh, hopefully it'll lead to even more work and keep on snowball in the right direction i certainly hope so and that gives yeah. us something to look forward to so we have something yeah. to look forward to, man. That that's that's really cool. Uh, I wanted okay. to crap. What was I going to ask you, man? I just went <laughs> blank. Uh, uh, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> I know, man. I just had something. Um. Oh yeah. I, I wanted to. How can people follow you? Uh, what are the different um, social medias that you're on? How how can people go about keeping keeping track of what you got going on and your different projects and stuff? 
Yep. Uh, all my links to everything is on, on my website, jonathanhedrickcomics.com. Um, awesome. And yeah, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky. Follow me on, on all those. Um, um, try to stay active across the board. Um, yeah, that, that's the best way. Uh, I mean, on some of those more than the others, depending on what the algorithms look like. But um, yeah, yeah. Try to give me a follow on at least one of them. Yeah. Boom. I put it on the uh, on the banner down below. JonathanHedrickComics.com. Excellent. And, and then follow him on all the social media platforms. He's on Instagram. So super, yep. super um, responsive and everything. Always active on there. Posting I try to be. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's been fun, man. It's really been fun watching you. And uh, keeping up with your life since you moved over there, because I have never been anywhere in Europe. I've never been outside of the <laughs> U.S., man. So I'm stuck yeah. here in the southern states. So I'm living vicariously through you a little bit sometimes. And it's been fun. It's fun to keep yeah, up thank, with you. Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, for the longest time, I, I didn't do much travel e either. And, um, you know, not, not all of us get that opportunity to do it. So uh, the cards right. fell in the right spot, you know, for me to, to make it over here. Um and you know, why not? You know, the that just got the uh, packed up and, and and made the jump, and it was for the best. Awesome, man. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear that everything's going well for you. Do you have? You. Uh, let's see, we got spill blood dropping in. You said mm -hmm. mid October, hopefully, unless it gets yep. pushed back. Which we're hoping for mid October. So, um, yep. and you got anything else? that uh, you wanted to talk about as far as projects? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I did, a, I'm doing a lot of work for hire um, lately. So uh, other people okay. are doing running campaigns that I'm involved in. Um, so okay. it's not the campaign I'm running. So I like to make sure I tell people about it. Cause if, you know, they're not following that creator, they're not going to get the notifications, but um, okay. earlier in the year, a comic book I wrote uh, called time served got um, released um, by Brad Scott Studios, uh, a, a small indie publisher. And so issue two is going to go uh, launch sometime in October. And if anyone backed wow. Capable, my previous campaign for Capable, they already got a digital copy of issue one. So if they liked it, please uh, uh, back that campaign. I'm also going to have a short story um and uh, Joey Galvez, who runs the Geek Collective, he's got a campaign running called Archetypes 2. Um, it, it's not like a, 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 you don't need to read issue one. It's, it's, it's like an anthology type magazine. Like think Wizard, wow. but more modern without the price guide. Um, so oh, you, don't cool. need to, you don't need to get issue one, but I recommend getting it. So, but um, my story in issue two it, um, it's called Abracadabra, and it's going to be the first okay. time it's been in print. I've ha I put it online on Global Comics um, a while back, and I get my Substack readers um, got a chance to read it. Um, but it'll be the first time it's in print. So if, if people want it in print, uh, they'll have the back archetypes number two, and I think that's launching in October as well. Nice. Um what else? Oh man, I hope uh, if I forget something, someone's going to be mad at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be at Thought Bubble, which is uh, the biggest comic book convention in England. I'll be there in November. So I'll be one of the wow. guests there alongside my wife, yeah. Francesca. And we're going to be wow. rubbing elbows with some of the big time elite comic book creators. So we're super stoked that we got uh, invited to be there. Um, so I'm hoping I can uh, bump into James Tynan and Chip Zdarsky, you and, you know, and see some. Uh, I have some friends um, that I already know that are going to be there too. So it's going to be a good time. Looking forward to that. Man. So that'll be my my second con here in Europe, um, second international con. You know and, that's going to be a blast, dude. That's yeah, going to be so much fun. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be a cool little uh, weekend trip, um, dude. Yeah, that, that's the, the most recent stuff off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Man, that's some good stuff, dude. I, so a lot to look forward to for, for both you and for us, man. We got some cool yeah. projects coming. Yeah, yeah dude. Please. Thank you yeah. so much, man. 
Thank you yeah, so much yeah. for hanging out with me. Dude. Anytime. Uh, it's my pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity. And I wanted to remind everybody, JonathanHedrickComics.com. That's the best place to find his stuff. You can also find him on Instagram, on all the social medias. Um, and uh, let's see. Next week, y'all, we got a, an awesome guest coming up. We have, I'll be back live next week, guys. It'll be the first time in a couple weeks. Um, but I've got writer Matt Bors from the series Toxic Avenger from Ahoy Comics. And I'm um, looking forward to talking about that series. And I'm um, looking forward to that one coming out because that's a childhood favorite. Were you ever oh, into yeah. Toxic Avenger as a kid? Oh, yeah, man. I, I love um, those. Uh, uh, Tromo, I think, is the company that Tromo? made all. Yeah. I, I um, actually met the, I can't remember his name, but I met the man that runs that. Uh, Lloyd, oh, runs Lloyd that business. Costney. Yes. I, I met him at uh, in Miami. A little over 10 years ago at uh, Supercon, wow. and he did a, an um, yeah, it, it was super cool. He did a panel there, um, just talking about all, all the, the movies that they did. Um, and this was this was when James Gunn was an, announced as director to be for Guardians of the Galaxy, like Guardians of the Galaxy wasn't out yet, but oh, you know, wow. James Gunn had worked with him, so you know, some of the conversation was about. Uh, that uh, saying how he was a good fit to do a, a movie like Guardians of the Galaxy, and he talked about how like uh, his movies are always going to be for free on YouTube. Um, and I thought that was that was super cool. Yeah, I, I grew up with the the action figures and the cartoon, and yeah, that was the 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 first Marvel um, Toxic Avengers was uh, a staple. You know, loop always oh, yeah. uh, in the collection. So I love all that kind of stuff. I, I'm like a huge, you know, monster guy. I love Swamp Thing. Uh, I, I love the, all the Universal monsters. I grew up, you know, with the Monster Me Squad. Too. So all all that stuff, the gory stuff. Uh, yeah, I, and I you were also a uh, you're also a TMNT kid as well. So I, I oh, know yeah. that you'd probably like Toxic Avenger. Oh yeah, those are like one and the same, man. Yeah, give, give me some, give me some green ooze and pour it on something. Let's see what we get. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, anything you want to say to to the guys watching before or the chat watching, not the guy, the g <laughs> ladies and gentlemen watching in the chat. Anything you want to say before we end it? Oh, thanks everyone for watching. Sorry we couldn't be live. I, I'm you know uh, six hours uh, uh, ahead. Huge time difference. It's understandable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, please, if you can, follow me on uh, at least one of those um, platforms. Keep an eye on my stuff. Um, check out any of those books that uh, I mentioned. If you haven't, um, there's one of them that you haven't heard of before. And yeah, I hope to see you around. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for hanging out with us this week. I know there's, like we like you just said, there's a huge difference. You're six hours ahead. So that's, yeah. that's the only reason we had to do it pre-recorded is because... It would be super late there if we oh, did yeah. a live stream at 7.30. So, dude, I totally understand. I'm just super grateful for you being here, being back with us again. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime. You know it. Awesome. And thank you to you guys in the chat that are watching right now. I'm always grateful for you guys. Thank you so much. I hope you come back next Monday. We'll be back live. And to anybody catching the replay, man, thank you guys as well. I love you all, and I'll see you next Monday. Peace. I'd say that one is a banger, man. It's a real certified banger, dude.